welcome to the Women's Foundation for Greater Memphis, February on Cable Tonight Show. I am Ruby Bright. I am the Executive Director of the Women's Foundation for Greater Memphis. And we have a great show for you tonight. We will be focusing on and talking about financial literacy, the ABCs of financial education, how savings and um, planning your money so that you can achieve the things that you want to achieve around success and building your assets. First, I want to just tell you that um, a little bit about the Women's Foundation. The Women's Foundation for Greater Memphis, our mission is to uh, promote philanthropy, foster leadership, and support programs that help women and children reach their full potential. We've been doing this since 1995 and uh, celebrating 17 years, investing more than $14 million in the community specifically to support uh, vulnerable families. That means that people who are living in poverty are living at the poverty level, and including a family uh, head of single woman, female headed household and her children. And we do this work by regranting funds to 33 organizations annually. Um, our operating budget uh, for grant making this year exceeds $600,000. And as I said, tonight is a night that we will talk about how we will help families and are helping families to manage um, their financial um, income regardless of what level and then how we work together in partnership to, with other organizations to make that happen. I do want you to be sure that if you've just turned in, this is the Women's Foundation for Greater Memphis on Cable Tonight Show, and we have a great story in front of you, and we want you to stay tuned. Um, for more information about the foundation, you can always call uh, the office. Um, and we also have, the number is 901-578-9346. And uh, our website is wfgm.org, as you see there on the screen. So again, welcome to the show, and I want to introduce our guest uh, to, for this uh, session of our show. And uh, I'm pleased to say that as we talk about the ABCs of financial literacy, that I have uh, one of the top leaders uh, in this class of nonprofit, and that is Linda Williams. Linda Williams is the president and CEO of the Rise Foundation. Welcome, Linda. Thank you. I'm glad to be here tonight. Well, um, you know, I've said financial literacy is a very important uh, part of building our community. Uh, for many people, you know, it, it, I think that people get afraid of the word financial and then literacy. <laughs> um, and managing money is a hard thing to do. So, Linda, tell me about the Rise Foundation. When was it started and what's the mission? Well, first of all, we started in 1999. And, of course, uh, it started really serving public housing residents. Uh, at that time, um, our first board chair Robert Lipscomb was really concerned about the public housing residents who were working but not able to move out of public housing. And so we spent a lot of time with those residents with focus groups and that sort of thing and the key thing was that they just didn't know how because they didn't have the skill sets to manage their resources. They had the resources but did not have them uh, available, the tools available to help them maximize their resources. So that's why we started our first financial literacy classes and of course our first program was the Save Up program. Mm -hmm. uh, I'd like to share with you our mission is, is to help people to become self-sufficient by building and sustaining both human and financial assets. We want them to know that they are their first asset right. as humans and then of course those resources that they get, it's important for them to manage them properly so that they can make the best use of those resources. And Linda, you know, uh, using, when we talk about, uh, again, the, the big words, if you will, and, and that's not to minimize, um, you know, the importance, but it's really about money. It's all about money. Right. And how you use it. And, uh, and really how you prioritize that so that not only do you kind of survive, I, you know, many times when I'm talking with um, families who are, are in, you know, public housing or in the, any one of our many programs and we talk about poverty, they really don't identify with that word because um, survival is really um, the major situation. That's true. And of course, 
through our programs, what we've been able to demonstrate is that even though they have, they're considered low income, they still can maximize the results of uh, the use of their money. For example, in our Save Up program, uh, we've, we've served more than 476 families, and those families have been able to garner $6.2 million in assets that they never thought they'd be able to do. But if they put their mind to it and set some financial goals and then work towards the goal, the goals, the entire family working towards those goals, including the children, including mm -hmm. the entire family in the process, it's unbelievable what they can do. Seeing that kind of result, you know, from one family to another, um, and I think that it's important that we also help everyone that's listening uh, tonight to understand that this financial education is for everybody. It is. You know, I mean, we all can take some lessons around how we um, save our dollars, we manage our money, and how we plan for the future. But specifically for, uh, you know, a community that, a, fam a people, are people in our community that need that advantage edge. You know, it's one thing to, you know, get skills and get a job, and then how do you, you know, build on that and sustain that? And what we call a little help or helping hand goes a long way. Exactly. In, uh, in helping to empower the individual, right, to be able to do what they're they need to do. Right, uh, and exactly, that's what we try to do. Not do things for the families that we work with, but empower them with knowledge and skills so that they can take care of the fam them, their families themselves. And I think that's why we see such remarkable uh, results and outcomes from the program, from the individuals who we work with. And now, explain the Save Up program. You know, how can, how do you get, um, someone listening and, you know, they're in a situation, how do you get in a Save Up program? First of all, to get more detailed information about the Save Up program, we do have a, um, a number that they can call with a nine minute overview that will probably be able to give them more than what we're gonna share tonight, but it's 572-1615, and they'll get a nine minute overview. Right now, we're working with more than just public housing residents. We're working with anyone in Shelby County who, is, who qualifies for the Earned Income Tax Credit, oh, that's great. as well as anyone with a Section 8 voucher. Uh, what we do is we have an orientation so they'll know specifically the re rules and requirements, then really not rules, but the requirements of the program. For example, if someone is interested in purchasing a home, we want them to have a credit score of 580. Why do we want that? Because basically the, life, the maximum time period in which the individuals can be in our program is two years. We want them to be successful. Can you imagine? being in a program for five, ten years or trying to make it, two years is really the maximum amount of time. We want them to see some success. So in order to do that with a credit score of 580, we would be able to work with them on improving that credit score so that they could get a good interest rate on the mortgage for their homes. And of course, if an individual is interested in other things, uh, the other item assets that we're, we have available would be a car, uh, a lot of the companies that are in Memphis now are located in the county and the out right. uh, uh, not on a bus ride, a route. Right. So we're finding more and more individuals needing a car so we can help them purchase that first car along with um, a computer for the family. We've had some of our families to take a computer and do a home-based business. Mm. Um, and then of course education is always important and we'll help them put money away to improve their educational opportunities as well. And the so education those are, opportunity for their children as well as the Well, actually it's for them. Okay. But if they start saving for them, guess what happens? The children. The children will, they, they'll have money there too because savings will become habit forming. In that particular program, when they start, they go through financial literacy for six weeks and they come in on Thursday night and of course, we could have it at other times, but it's after work. Mm -hmm. We wanna make it convenient. They're there from 5.30 to 8.30 on Thursday nights, six straight weeks learning about how to manage their money. We start first with uh, just getting an understanding of their, the meaning of money. Uh, when did you first have your experience with money? And that really gives, takes a lot of thought because right. most of us just take it for granted. We see the paper and the coins and we assume certain things, but we want people to understand what money is all about and how they formulated their first views on money. We also want them to set asset goals. It's always easier to reach something if you set a goal. Mm -hmm. And so we try to help them to set those goals. What is it that you'd like to do? And it won't be just the goal 
goals set with us and reach, but we want them to do lifelong goals as well. Once they get that house or that car, there are other things that they'll want mm -hmm. for their families as well. And we want it to be a continuous process. When they start saving after the classes, we're able to match their $1 worth of savings with $2. That's a pretty good deal. Now that's a great incentive. <laughs> of course, it's up to $1,000, then we match it with $2,000, and they can leave our programs with $3,000 with $3, towards an asset. Uh, that's the incentive to get them into the habit of saving. We want savings to be habit forming. As a matter of fact, when we work with them on not their budget, we don't call it a budget, mm -hmm. because a budget is like, if you say the word budget, sounds like diet. It's an awful thing. <laughs> <laughs> it's an awful I agree brand. with that one. So it's a spending plan, <laughs> deciding how you're going to spend your money in advance. And in setting that spending plan, we always tell them to pay yourself first because you deserve it. You've worked hard. Pay yourself first. They look at how much they can pay themselves. It could be $25 a month. It could be $50 a month. And we've had some to even say, I can pay myself $75 a month and uh, they start saving towards an asset, asset. Now one of the things we do require is that they stay in the program a minimum of six months before purchasing the asset. We really want them to experience the, the routine of savings. And of course the maximum uh, amount of time they can be in the program is two years. Okay. But we found from the ones we work with they get so excited until they're usually able to reach their asset goal in 18 months. Much sooner, right? Much sooner, much sooner. Um, as you were saying that in terms of getting in the habit of saving and as I said uh, you know it, that's something that we all can do mm -hmm. I was as you were talking um, I was reminded of my uh, grandmother a uh, saving uh, teaching us about saving and you know it actually was in the coffee can you mm -hmm. know all the the coins put the extra coin and you know I could just remember my glass jar when it started when the bottom covered I wanted to have it filled up and filled up and so it was our Christmas fun then you mm -hmm. know everything you save you save it until Christmas and then you could go and buy whatever you want um, and that that you know kind of starting that trend was something that um, was a value to us and it's never too early as a matter of fact really we should start with our children as, as early as the point in which they can really have discussion with you uh, I'd say at fifth um, at kindergarten you know, even before then, they need to start understanding that. I remember when I used to go to the sto uh, store with my parents, or uh, I would see um, a credit card or a check, and then you you didn't know what that meant. Right. You need to start helping young people to understand what all those mean, those things mean. For a credit card, uh, that means that you're getting credit. You know, and that when you write a check, you've got money in the bank to cover purchase and children need to understand even that right now. You're absolutely right. If you just joined us, I am Ruby Bright, the Executive Director of the Women's Foundation for Greater Memphis and tonight I have with me the President and CEO of the RISE Foundation, which is a financial education and learning program that help uh, families to be able to plan for their future and manage their money. Uh, resources and and also plan for the things that they want in life their dream a home um, you know a car and and just the self-sufficiency of the future uh, whether that's their education or their children's education so again um, if you're listening um, I want you to remember to um, Remember her number, she will be talking about this number soon. Linda, thank you for being here again, and we're talking about the importance of savings and uh, planning for the future and life. And I think we also need to really t think, talk a little bit about, you know, those hidden rules um, in terms of earning money. You get a job, you're earning money, and uh, without a plan, sometimes, you know, you purchase things and you're not ready to make those purchases uh, and then you know are you needing a quick loan because you're caught up in, in things I mean you know tell us a little bit about those traps that people can get themselves there in. There are a lot of traps out there as a matter of fact just walking in the mall you'll go and purchase something and um, the clerk will say well if you get a credit card yeah. you know you'll get 10 percent off of this well one of the things you need to understand is that credit score which determines how much the cost that you're going to have to pay for if you have to do a loan of any kind that credit score is going to be really important and the more credit that you credit cards that you have uh, that can sometimes impact on 
credit score. So that's really important. Everything that looks good may not be good. And so that's why you've got to really be careful about the number of credit cards that you get. Um, and you know, there are a lot of ways that people can, you know, get credit and, um, you know, certainly get caught up in the credit card um, situation. I remember my early years and, you know, if it's plastic is not real money and you do have to pay it back. You do have to pay it back and as a, another thing that uh, affects your credit score is if you get a credit card and you, you go all the way up to your maximum limit, allowable limit, that looks bad. Mm -hmm. And of course, that's when you start having difficulty paying it back. And what people will look at is paying the minimum amount, and then it seems like the balance never, never, just, goes, it never goes down. It's a slow process. So why not wait and save for what you want? And then money, you won't have to worry about any kind of interest. Uh, and so, of course, in terms of buying a house, you'll have to get a loan for a house. But there are so many things that we use credit for that we really shouldn't use credit for. But buying for. a house, you're actually building you, your, your assets. I mean, you, exactly. you know, with a house. And that's also, you know, it's still, I think, the great American dream. For, it is, for it everyone is. Everyone is to wants have your own home. home. That's true. Uh, and then once you, you know, get in that particular situation, um, you now have some value that uh, elevates your assets mm -hmm. and creates more opportunities as long as we can sustain that, I guess. Right. And of course, if you look at credit cards now and you look at the interest rates, really we all should be getting rid of our credit cards now. The interest rates are unbelievable. Yeah. They are totally unbelievable. And the late fees going on top of that. Right. If you do not pay your bill on time, Usually there's a $25 or $35 late fee. You can be one day late and then you're going to pay extra. And so that's money that could be available for your family. And those are the kinds of things that we try to help families to look at is how we waste money. As a matter of fact, one of the activities we do in the financial literacy class, we have them for two weeks to take an envelope and put all the receipts for everything they purchase. If it's going to the gas station to buy gas, or stopping at a store just to get a pop, or getting McDonald's for the kids, just everything. And usually at the end of the two weeks, they are surprised at how much money just went out of their pocket that they didn't even realize. And it makes them start thinking about making better choices with how they're doing things. For example, rather than going uh, to a little corner store, a store to get a pop, go to the grocery store and buy a 12 pack mm -hmm. or a six pack or whatever. Uh, you save money that way. Mm -hmm. And that's what we want them to look at, how they can shave those uh, costs off where they can really make the best use of the resources that they do have. And then, you know, um, in these classes I, or the programs, um, when people enter the room, they're in the room. Everybody's there for the same reason. Same reason. So there's a lot of good, you know, camaraderie probably and uh, support, and they learn from each other. I mean, you know, we, as, we, as a, we learn from each other. As a matter of fact, we do it, and that's why we do it. I mean, you could do financial literacy one on one, but for the people that we serve, they learn so much from each other. We facilitate the classes. We don't really teach them. Right. We facilitate, and it's amazing how much. They learn from each other things that they've found out or that they've done to really uh, reduce their expenses. That's the really important piece of that program. And they also qualify. We we'll go back to this home ownership because you know sometimes you know that is such an important part of a life achievement. Uh, whether you know you're a single female headed household or mm -hmm. a, a family unit working. You know, there are a lot of people who are working and making minimum, you know, um, salaries, but they still are working and trying to, you know, take care of their family. It's the the um, there are some incentives for first-time home buyers. Oh yes, there are a lot of different programs uh, in the city for first-time home buyers, and that's something that we try to make sure that they have that information. As a matter of fact, we also try not to provide a service that already exists. Anyone that's gonna purchase a home, we make sure that they connect with an, any of the organizations that provide home buyer education. Uh. When they go to get the mortgage, they need to understand what to look for in a good mortgage. They need to understand when they go and select the house that they want, how the importance of getting an inspection. Uh, they need to, we want them to learn all those things. We don't want to tell them. They need to learn this. As a matter of fact, once they start saving, we even have a quarterly savers club meeting. And 
those meetings, we try to do other educational activities. For example, we may take them to Home Depot for a class on how to lay tile. Not that they would necessarily lay tile in their homes, but they need to know what to look for when tile is being laid properly. Uh, we might take them to uh, a class, I mean, from a, a several furniture stores so they can do comparisons buying, yeah. so they can look at the difference in quality versus the cost, all those kinds of things that we want them to start thinking about when they make those choices. It's, it's up to them to make the best choice possible for their families. So it's not just buying the house and there you got it. You, got, you, you have all of those other things that you have to think about in that planning. Exactly. As a matter of fact, when you get the house, when you get the house, you have to also look at the repairs that might come up. It would be nice if we could invent a house where you could move <laughs> in the house, plumbing would never go wrong, right. you know, the heating and air conditioning will always last forever and ever, but that just doesn't happen, yeah. does roof, it? Roof replaced. Right. right. So they need to understand the importance of uh, all those things that they have to take care of and that's why they have to continue to save because when that air conditioning goes out they've got to be able to replace it pretty fast and that just brings up uh, a situation in which one lady shared with me is that when she purchased a house she got a special contract that was supposed to cover any repairs that was needed with uh, major appliances and of course her air, con air conditioning and heat was the first thing that went out and somehow or another whatever company she had did not want to pay it the empowering thing that she felt was is that even though they didn't want to pay it, she had the money in her savings account to pay for that air conditioning heating system to be replaced. And it was so empowering and it was almost frightening to her. She said she didn't want to write the check to pay for it all at once. She wanted to pay half at a time because she had never felt so empowered in yeah. her whole life. Yeah. So that's how empowering it is to be able to take care of your own responsibilities. Well, you know, those kind of um, level points that we get to, you know, progressive points in our lives, I think, you know, they're very, very important. And sometimes we don't give ourselves credit, you know, enough, not, no pun intended, mm -hmm. but, you know, our potential, really fulfilling our potential, sometimes we don't think that we can do it. And when we see that we can, it, it is. It's an empowerment, empowering time for us. And we've talked about, you know, savings and how to, you know, uh, manage your money, but we haven't talked about, you know, um, where you put that money or, you know, opportunities for that. I mean, it's, I mentioned earlier about the jar, but that's really not the no, best way. No, it is not. <laughs> it is not the best way. Or the mattress. That's not the best place. Right, <laughs> right. Uh, so banking, tell me about Well, we do a whole session on banking, looking at banking products. We recommend that they look at our banking system because, for one thing, if they're going to want to have a mortgage, more than likely they're going to need to have that in order to move forward. Uh, we want them to also look at if they have to borrow money, that the interest rates would be lower with a traditional banking system. So on the last night of the class, our banking partners come in and actually right. open up accounts for them and explain to them the, uh, the different products that are available through the bank. Um, that's great. You know, one of the th uh, things that we found in working with many of our grantee partners, uh, and especially with Memphis Hope, there are a lot of families who, you know, um, have not had a good experience, you know, when it as it relates to savings with an institution, right. because you know, uh, keeping that up. I I just remember my daughter um, when she got her first checking account, and she was writing. She called. She's writing checks, and it's like, I, you're out of money. I can't be out of. Money. I still have check less, checks left. Right. We go over that. Yes. <laughs> you have to know how much is in the bank. Right. <laughs> you have to keep up with right. that. Right. 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 And that's pretty important. Of course, we're we're having savings accounts, but we also talk to them about checking accounts, about the use of the debit cards. Uh, you can get into serious trouble if you use a de debit card and you're not keeping up with your expenditures with that debit card. Mm -hmm. So you've got to track all of your expenditures to make sure that you know what your balance is because, again, if you overdraw on that account, guess what happens? There's a fee. Right. And you, the, what we want them to avoid is paying any additional fees. Again, those fees can be used f for the care of their children. And so every time you do an overdraft and have to pay a fee, then you're taking 25 or 35 dollars out of the mouths of your children. That gives me flashbacks of my own <laughs> learnings, you know, uh, not only do you pay the fee, but you also, checks are bouncing, you know, so it's hard.
back, you know, catch up on those kind of things. I remember when I first started and had a banking account, uh, it was pretty tough. And the, the rules are even heavier now. Right. right. So you're listening to uh, the Women's Foundations On Cable Tonight Show. I have with me Linda Williams. She's the president and CEO of the Rise Foundation. Uh, if you um, want to learn more about the Rise Foundation, Linda, give us that number again. Well, our, our main number is 507-6644, but we have a special line if you want to have a nine-minute overview of our save-up program, and that number is 572-1615. Okay, so 572-1615. 1515. 5, 5721615 to learn more about the financial um, the save, up save up program. program. Right. Mm -hmm. So if you haven't started saving or you need help in saving, uh, starting a savings program and you got an aspiration to buy a car or a house or computers or save for your children's school, your own school, or anything that you think is very important. Um, you know, dial this number up. Dial the number to see, learn more about it. So, Linda, let's give that number one more time. Okay, it's 572-1615. Okay, 572-1615. That's correct. All right. A nine-minute overview of the, of the Save Up program. Great, great. Mm -hmm. you, dial it up if you're interested in learning more about it. You may not be uh, ready to go into the program, but save it. Save the money number so that you can look at how you might be involved in the Save Up program. And so we thank you, Linda, for being with us tonight. And I just want to remind you all that the Women's Foundation's uh, annual tribute luncheon and symposium will occur. Uh, first, we have our Legends honorees, which um, they should be coming up on the screen right now. The Legend reception is April 16th. Uh, 2013, and then our luncheon is April 26, 2013. Uh, the the legends that we will be celebrating are six fabulous women. So please mark your calendar: April 16th for the Legends Award reception, and April uh, 26 for the annual tribute luncheon and symposium. Again, thank you for joining us on the uh, Women's Foundation on Cable Tonight Show. Please uh, mark your calendars, and we look forward to your participation. Thank you again. Linda Williams with the Rise Foundation is our guest talking about financial management. Uh, and we're excited about the opportunity to partner with you, Linda. We didn't say that, but welcome again to our show. Thank you, and um, you're so doing of the great work. Thank you.